Welcome back Science 9 students. Today we're going to talk about thermal energy. So let's get this thing started. Um, let's define heat. Uh, heat is the transfer of thermal energy from one object to another because of a difference in temperature. Um, so I think you guys would all agree that our bodies are warmer than the air and the stuff around here. So you guys can even try this at home. If you take your hand and place it on your desk or a countertop and just hold it there for a little bit, um, there is a transfer of thermal energy happening here. Um, what is actually happening is the molecules in my hands are moving faster than the molecules of this uh, slate countertop. It's actually bouncing off the countertop and causing the countertop molecules to move faster, which is increasing the heat. Um, but this is a spontaneous process. Basically what that means is it doesn't really need anything to um, get it started. It just happens, it's spontaneous. So the heat is transferred from my hand to the countertop. So if I take my hand there, hold it for a little bit, I can definitely tell my hand's a little cooler. And if I feel this countertop versus over here, this has definitely been warmed up. So heat uh, flows spontaneously from hot objects to cold objects. So your hand is hotter than the countertop here. So the heat is being transferred from my hand to the countertop. So let's consider another scenario. What happens when we drop an ice cube into a, a cup of hot tea? Okay, so we draw a picture here. So if you got a cup of tea and you place an ice cube in there, what's happening in terms of thermal energy? Uh, hopefully you guys can answer that. Um, this is the water around the ice cube is warmer than this, right? So it's thermal energy is gonna be transferred from the warm tea to the cold ice cube. All right, so let's talk about temperature. So we mentioned how heat can flow spontaneously from hot to cold objects. There's gotta be a way to measure this heat, right? And, and there's a way to do that. Um, we call it temperature. It's a measure of how hot or cold an object is compared to a reference point. There's three temperature scales, which we've talked about in different videos. You have the Celsius, the Kelvin scale, the Fahrenheit. How's it going? So that's what we're gonna be looking at. Uh, so the temperature is related to the average kinetic energy um, of these molecules. So if I have two cups of water at equal temperatures, and if I were to take one cup of water and stir it, the, actual, the cup of water that I actually stirred is gonna be a little bit warmer than the other one. That's because temperature is related to how fast these molecules are moving. If you can get them moving faster, it's gonna be a little bit warmer. The scientist James Jewell did an experiment on that. If you guys want to do a little researching on James Jewell and temperature, you'll find a really cool experiment he did, which proved that if you stir water up, it's actually going to increase the temperature. All right. Uh, so now we're going to talk about how thermal energy depends on mass and temperature. Um, so we have two scenarios here. We have the first scenario is we have a cup of we were going to compare a cup of tea versus a full pot of tea at the same temperature, which has more thermal energy. So picture a cup of tea and a cup of, or a full uh, teapot, which is going to have more. Um, probably the easy answer is what? The full pot of tea. So that one's going to have more thermal energy. It's kind of simple because which one, if you have a full, if you have a cup of tea and a full teapot, which one's going to cool down faster? obviously the cup of tea would. All right, so now let's consider this. Compare a cup of tea versus cold tea at the same mass, which has more thermal energy. Hopefully you guys would answer that a cup of hot tea has more energy than a cup of cold tea. Um, so these two scenarios definitely tell us that thermal energy depends on the mass, how much you have of it, and on basically the temperature. I'll give you guys a preview to a formula that we're going to use later on. Q equals 
MCAT. I could call it Q because MCAT because it's an easy way to remember it. But the heat or the thermal energy of an object can be calculated if you know the mass, if you know the temperature, and you know the specific heat of that material, which we'll learn about later on. So the more mass you have, so the higher M is, the more thermal energy you're going to have. Uh, the more or the higher the temperature you have to begin with, the more thermal energy you're going to have. So these scenarios are related to this formula right here. Um, and then we got this third one here. Let's say we have a cup of hot tea versus a full cold pitcher of lemonade, which has more thermal energy. So we have this cup of hot tea and we have this pitcher of cold tea, which is gonna have more thermal energy. It's kind of interesting to think about because um, this has more mass, but this one has a higher temperature. Well, that's where that formula, the key of those MCAT would be used. We'd have to figure out the specific heat of the lemonade. We'd have to know the mass of this. We'd have to know the mass of that. We'd have to know the temperature, but we could calculate which one had more. So right now I could answer that. I mean, I couldn't tell you if this one has more or this one has more. We would actually have to calculate it. All right, uh, so let's switch gears here. We're gonna talk about thermal contraction and expansion. Um, thermal expansion, it's gonna be an increase in the volume of material due to a temperature increase. Um, so our bodies will even do this. And maybe you have noticed this because we live in the great state of Minnesota. Um, if you go swimming in a cold lake, um, and I have my wedding ring right here, um, I have noticed that my, my fingers will tend to kind of like shrink up because I'm colder and actually my wedding ring can slip off my hand pretty easily. So when I go swimming, I make sure to take this thing off when I go swimming, otherwise I'll, I could potentially lose it. And the same thing too on a hot summer day, it's actually pretty hard to get this thing off because my body even expands and contracts. Um, so thermometers uh, work based on this idea. I have a thermometer right here. Um, I'm going to see if you guys can see this here, but if I take my hand, I think you guys can see this, and if I put it right here, I'm causing the material to warm up. You can see that the thermometer is rising, so the material is expanding, and that's the basis on how um, thermometers work. And obviously, if I were to cool this thing back down, I'll put it in the speaker of water, and it's cooling down. So as this cools down, you can kind of see it's it's uh, going to be contracting. So thermometers work that way. Um, a lot of the older thermostats in your house work based on this idea. So I'll draw this, the simple workings of a thermostat here. Um, so this would be like the little switch right here. You can adjust it. This thing will go up or down as needed. So when the house gets warm, this coil is going to expand. When it expands, it'll contact this thing right here and it'll tell your furnace to turn off in your house. When your house gets cold, like I have shown right here, the coil shrinks and then it loses that contact so the furnace actually will turn on for you. Um, so that's kind of, so thermostats in your house work on this whole idea of thermal expansion, it's pretty genius. Um, bridges and buildings have to take into a, uh, account for thermal expansion. Concrete, believe it or not, expands and contracts. Um, I pour concrete in the summertime and there's a code in Minnesota here that for every 50 feet of sidewalk that I pour, I have to leave a joint. I have to leave a gap. And this gap, and I actually put in a special piece of felt board. We actually call that an expansion joint. Oops. Expansion joint. And we do this because in the summertime, when this concrete is expanding, we don't want this concrete to touch and then buckle up and then it'll cause it to crack and kind of fall apart. 
So for every 50 feet, we have to put an expansion joint in the concrete because even concrete will expand. Um, bridges have slots in them. I'm sure you guys have seen those, the, the little fingers at the beginning and ends of bridges. That's for these bridges to be able to expand and contract. So all material does this. So it's really kind of cool. Even uh, your, your oven thermometer has the same thing to help that thing go. All right, so now we're gonna switch gears again and we're gonna go back to Q to Zemcat. We're gonna talk about specific heat. Uh, specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a material by one degree Celsius. So this is the amount of heat needed to raise one gram. So if I have one gram of water and I wanted to raise that one gram of water by one degree Celsius, it's the amount of heat. It's, a, it's how many joules of heat do I need to put into that water to go from one degree to two degree. Um, and objects, this is a, it's a physical property of uh, substances and materials. So not all substances have the same specific heat. And actually I'll show you guys that on this next slide here. Um, so water actually has an unusually high specific heat. It takes 4.18 joules of energy. So this is that amount needed to raise water by, or one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Plastics are in the range of about two Air, so even air has its own specific heat. Um, air is about one. Iron is about 0.449. I'm gonna show you guys a calorimetry lab here in a little bit. So that's like, here's my little iron. So keep that in the back of your mind. And actually, I'm gonna get this thing warming up. It's a good time to do that. Uh, silver has a specific heat, 0.235. So it's unique to the materials. And like it says right here, the lower the material specific heat, the more its temperature rises when a given amount of energy is absorbed. So water has a very high specific heat. It actually takes a lot of energy to change water's um, temperature. We know that because we live in Minnesota um, and when our lakes freeze over, it might be a spring day, 70 degrees. Do our lakes just instantly melt? when they've been frozen over no it takes a couple days of that 70 degree heat uh, it takes a lot of energy to melt the ice the same thing in summertime it takes a lot of energy to warm the lakes back up so we can actually swim in them so water has a very high specific heat it's good for us though because we live on a planet with a lot of water um, our planet basically our water on our planet is basically our own heater and our own air conditioner it keeps us from getting too hot and it keeps us from getting too cold. Um, so water has a high specific heat, which helps keep the earth both warm and cool. Um, so here's kind of a question for you. Uh, compare a plastic bumper on a car versus the car doors, which gets hotter faster. And then just so we can say, well, color will absorb heat a little bit more. Let's just say they're both gray. Um, and and hopefully the answer is the car door, which would be metal, right? And that makes sense because if you look at our chart here, iron doesn't take a whole lot of energy to raise its temperature. It's 0.449 versus the plastic, which is two. It takes a lot of energy to warm up plastic versus the iron. So which is gonna get hotter faster first? It's going to be the car doors. Okay, so here's our formula. I've been talking about it. Uh, Q equals MCAT, it's how we calculate the thermal energy of an object. Um, now you guys know what specific heat is. We use C, it's kind of weird. It's like specific heat starts with an S. But yet we use C for it, that's just the way it is. So we have Q equals MCAT, uh, mass will be in grams because of the fact that we're gonna use grams for our specific heat, so mass will be in grams. Temperature will be in degrees Celsius. So let's look at a couple problems using this new formula. It says an iron skillet has a mass of 500 gram. The specific heat of iron is 0.449 joules per gram times degree Celsius. How much heat must be absorbed to raise the skillet's temperature 
by 95 degrees Celsius. So Q equals M cap. This is an easier problem for us. Uh, we know the mass. The mass is 500. That's given, and that's in grams. Uh, we know C. C is 0 0.449 because um, it's iron, so it's 0.449. And the temperature change was 95. Oh, I suppose I didn't talk about this. Uh, the little delta thing, that means change in temperature. So we change it by 95 degrees. So how much thermal energy was needed? 500 times 0.49 times 95. So we're looking at 21,327.5. And that would be in joules because the specific heat was given in joules. We could say that it's 21.3275 kilojoules. Oops, not kilograms, but kilojoules. So either answer would be acceptable. All right, I believe in practice makes perfect. So let's try a couple more. It says, how much heat is needed to raise the temperature of 100 grams of water by 85 degrees Celsius? So again, we're looking for heat, so that's gonna be Q. So Q equals M cat. Okay, well we're given the mass is 100. Okay, great. Uh, we're gonna change it by 85. But C, huh, we're not given C. Well, here's the deal though. We know the material, the material is water. So you can look back in that table in your notes and you can see that water is 4.18. That's just a number you guys might want to get to memorize and use it a lot. The 4.18 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. So we can figure out the heat needed. Times 85. So it's 335,530 joules. Again, I could write that as kilojoules as 35.530 uh, kilojoules. All right, let's see here. Yeah, let's try this one. It says, how much heat is absorbed by a 750 gram iron skillet when its temperature rises from 25 to 125 degrees Celsius? All right, so we got Q equals MCAT. Uh, we know the mass of the skillet, 750. We don't know C, but again, we know the material is iron. So we can say that that's gonna be, if you look in your table, 0.449. And the change in temperature, well, we know it's changing from 25 to um, 125. So we could say that the change in temperature was 100. Um, now, just a little side note here, change in temperature would be TF minus TI. Um, so the final temperature was 125, and the initial temperature was 25. So that's where our 100's coming into play. And I think we got our metal object good and boiling here. So I'm just gonna uh, take that, turn it off for now. We're almost to that little lab experiment. It'll be kind of fun, I'll show you it. All right, so 750 times 0.449 times 100. So it'd be three, 33,675 joules. So that's how much uh, heat would be needed. All right. Let's see here. Which one could we do? Because I only want to do one more. I'll leave some of these for you guys. Let's see here. Mass. All right, let's do this one. This is a little different. It says, what mass of water will change its temperature by three degrees Celsius when 525 joules of heat is added to it? Okay, so Q equals MCAT. Let's plug in what we know. Well, we know Q this time, that's why this is different. 525 is the thermal energy. Um, the mass, well, we don't know mass. C of water, well, we know water is 4.18, okay. And then the change in temperature, well, it's saying it wants to change by three, so I can plug that in. So then you just solve this for mass. And we're gonna get uh, 12.54 M 
equals 525 divided by this. All right, so M equals I get the mass of the water would be 41 point, and it's round to the nearest tenth, nine. And the unit would be gram because we use 4.18. So the unit would be gram. All right. So now let's get back to this fun little experiment that I got here. You maybe noticed this little fancy contraption that I got here. And you see me boil the water with that metal in it. And we're going, what, what's he doing? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do a simple calorimeter experiment. Um, it's a way to find the specific heat of an unknown object. Um, so this is a calorimeter right here. It's just basically used to measure changes in thermal energy. Um, here's a picture of it. Um, so inside of here, I have a known amount of water. It's actually, I put 150 milliliters of water, which if you know the density of water is one gram per one uh, milliliter, there's 150 grams of water. Okay, I know that's in here. I know the temperature is uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm gonna actually teach you guys a little formula here. The Q of the block plus Q of the water equals zero. And I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna explain this. So would you guys agree that if I take that hot object right here and I put it in the water, would you agree that the water is going to gain energy? And hopefully you guys would say yes. And Q of B stands for Q of like the block, the object. I think you guys would agree that this is going to lose thermal energy, right? But here's the deal though. You guys know about the law of conservation of energy that um, nothing's ever really lost or created. So if you add the two uh, changes in the thermal energy together, it should be zero. So that's where we get this formula. So we have Q of the block plus Q of the water equals zero. So that's what I'm gonna do right now with this simple experiment. Uh, Q of the block would be M. Well, I have to know the mass of the block times C of the block times the change in temperature, which would be TF minus TI. And then for the water, it would be mass of the water times C of the water times the change in temperature equals zero. I'll show you what we can do with this. Um, I already told you the mass of the water in this container is 150. We know the specific heat of water, that's 4.18, okay? We're going to do the experiment to figure out the change in the temperature of the water. So the initial temperature of the water is going to be still 20 degrees. So I can plug that in, okay? Because I know the initial temperature. Um, I think you guys would agree that the initial temperature of this metal object would be equal to the water. You've seen it been boiling there. Um, I know that that object is, let's see here, it's, I know it's one of these. So that object is, a little bit smaller than that, is uh, 50 grams. So I know that that metal object there is 50 grams. I don't know the specific heat of that block. That's what the calorimeter is gonna tell us. Um, I know the initial temperature, I'm just measuring it right now. The initial temperature of this block is going to be 77.5. Uh, so the initial temperature would be 77.5. Um, so I'll go plus. So what we need to do is we have to figure out the final temperature of the system. So here's where the calorimeter comes into play is I think you guys would agree that when I place this metal object in this container that the heat loss is going to be gained so I'm gonna go like this drop that guy in there be really quick because I don't want to lose any of this thermal energy close this guy back up so I think you guys would agree that the final temperature should be the same because this is the system 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda go like this and kinda monitor it. I'm gonna look for the temperature change. Maybe even give it a little swirl. And when it finally stops moving, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, it was at, um, well, there's the 20, and it has risen, obviously, makes sense. We just placed a hot object in there. It's still slowly creeping up. I can see that. It's at uh, 22 and climbing, 22.2 like right now. But when this thing stops, so I'm gonna watch this closely. When this thing stops, that means we've reached the final temperature. So I'm gonna go like this, to monitor it. And actually, it is kinda equaled out already. So the, the final temperature then, of that of this system is 22.2 because actually it's starting to go down a little bit so the final system would be 22.2 over here this would be 22.2 equals zero let's see here i'm going to transfer i'm going to transfer the math up above but i'm going to simplify it so I'm gonna have two minus 7.5 equals that times 50. So what I have is negative 2765 times C. Plus, I'm gonna do the other side here. plus uh, 1379.4 equals zero. Okay, well then I have to solve this for C. We're trying to figure out the specific heat of this. So I'm gonna subtract that over. So I have negative 2765 times C equals a negative 1379.4. Divide both sides by negative 2765 negative two seven six five so i'll take this divide and i get c for this object equal to 0 0.49 i'll call it eight 0 0.498 um which is actually a really good experiment um because if i go back so 0.498 um, we, I told you that object is steel, so let me go back. Look at this. So for steel, the actual specific heat value is 0.449. Now, or for iron, I should say. This is steel, so it's going to have a little bit different specific heat value for it. So I'm actually pretty impressed with those results. But uh, yeah, and that's going to be a wrap for today's notes. You guys will have an assignment in Schoology on uh, 10 or 16.1 thermal energy.